Good evening! We bring you the latest in the world of sports. I'm Bea Diaz Fabros. We give you the conversations you want to hear from your favorite icons and athletes. I'm Zihir Vasho. In tonight's Game Plan, we'll preview the AFF Women's Championship matchup between Philippines and Thailand. Can our national squad wrap up the group stage with a win? We'll also get stories from the sidelines about your favorite players from PVL insider Sam Corrales. And we get to know more about Olympian Kayla Sanchez and her decision to represent the country. Buckle up sports fans, let's get in the game! As we near the end of the group stage of the AFF Women's Championship, the Filipinas are looking to finish strong against Thailand in their final match happening now at the Rizal Memorial Stadium. Now joining us tonight to talk about the exciting matchup is football analyst Mariel Benitez Haviliana. Hi Mariel, good evening and welcome to the game. Hi, good evening. Thank you for having me. Of course. Now, Mariel, I know we are all excited for the matchup at hand that is currently live on One Sports versus Thailand. But let's talk briefly about the big win of our Filipinas over the weekend versus Indonesia. Four goals to one, which was a comeback win. What are your thoughts from that big victory of ours? Well, the Filipinas have been playing very well. They are four um, wins in this tournament. I think the, the longest streak of wins so far for the Filipinas. Mm -hmm. They were down 1-0 in the first quarter, uh, in mm -hmm. the first half rather, but I don't think even us as analysts were nervous about that. We've always known that the, the team would always be able to come back. Parang second quarter, a uh, second half sila, they would always be able to play better mm -hmm. and that's what we saw in that game. It was definitely a match na lahat ng fans wanted to see that comeback win. Um, and especially as women in sports, alam natin yan. After a win, focus kagad tayo sa susunod na match. And for tonight naman, Marielle, what are we looking at um, with the game against Thailand? What well, makes them so dangerous? Well, Thailand, out of the 15 matches that we've played against Thailand in a whole history of women's football, we've only beaten them once. So it's definitely a challenging matchup tonight. In Southeast Asia, Thailand is a team that has qualified for the Women's World Cup. Um, mm. The first team from Southeast Asia. So this is the kind of level that we want to be in and we want to go over. So this year was the first time we actually beat Thailand um, early this January. So we're hoping that we're able to repeat that in tonight's game. Yeah. Well, Mariel, we will definitely want to replicate that win tonight. And because of that, you actually mentioned some keys to winning for our game tonight versus Thailand. The first one being uh, having a well-organized defense for our Filipinas girls. Uh, what, how important will our defense be tonight versus Thailand? Well, I think in the last few matches where our defense was never really challenged, mm -hmm. we've dominated in possession. So I think tonight going up against a team that is higher ranked than us, that is experienced, um, you talk about the key moments in the game and of course you talk about defense. You have to have a well-organized defense, a compact and solid defense, which we've had in the past. But tonight they have to really work and be coordinated so that yung mga, you know, makita natin the Thai team can also cross, they're also quick. That's why uh, our defense and the goalkeeper should really stay focused tonight. Second on your list, Marielle, is how we need to have quick transitions from offense again to defense. How important is this for tonight's match? Okay, well, we talk about an experienced team, so we can expect na siyempre compact and uh, compact then ang defense ng Thailand. So I think the way to beat them is through quick transitions. A lot of our goals is when we're able to send the ball to our strikers, to the likes of Sarina Bolden, Katrina Gilyu, and they have the ability to beat uh, 1v1s. So if we're able to get the ball to them and they have the space on the attacking third, or yung sinasabi natin malapit sa goal ng kalaban, then malaki ang chances natin na maka-convert or maka-score ng goal. Um, like what you see on screen, those through passes that connect to the strikers and they're able to convert the goal. Now, Marielle, last but not the least, you also mentioned how it is very important for us to take advantage of the set pieces and corner kicks. 
So how do you think this will really help us to get this win tonight versus Thailand? Well, corner kicks and set pieces, wala kang um, hindi moving ang ball. So mm -hmm. we have specialists, yung mga tawag natin free kick specialists like mm -hmm. Tane, Anes. Um, they're able to set up the ball and we have also those players who can really head the ball right in front of the goal. So when you're given the chance to take a breather, set up your ball and take these set pieces, this is a huge advantage, especially against a team that's also very experienced. That just reminded me of that last game na nakapag-qualify tayo sa World Cup. Grabe, kinikilabutan pa rin oh, ako. Oh, tayo. So I think you're right. That's one of the things that like people like me na fan uh, would really want to see in tonight's match. Um, let's go to your key players, Marielle. You mentioned here Serena Bolden, Katrina Gilyu, and Haley Long. How important is their presence in tonight's mm -hmm. match? Well, I think for tonight, I, I picked out a striker, uh, a midfielder, and a defender. Haley Long has the experience. Um, she has about 58 caps, mo one of the most experienced probably in the back line. Um, she she's very calm and composed and has that sense of leadership to get the team well organized. So she's not really that quick of a player, but she knows where to position herself, time her runs, and really be able to win ball um, on, on defense. Plus, she also has the ability to take those headers from corner kicks. Mm -hmm. Then you have Katrina Gilyu, who is just magnificent on the wing or on the midfield. Um, she is very quick. She helps out on offense and defense, and she's parang when in the last game in Indonesia when she came in as a substitute, talagang may spark bigla yung Pilipinas in the second half. So that's the kind of energy you want to see in tonight's game. And then of course Serena Bolden, she's not starting tonight, but Ooh. after a hat trick yes. um, in the last game, I'm sure she's super motivated. And there you can see physically she's strong. She has the ability to dribble against defenders and if she, you give her the space, she will really beat you and run that space to score the goal. So definitely three key players to watch out for. Definitely. Mapa defense, mapa offense. We really have to play our A game tonight versus Thailand. But you know, Maria, let's talk about another another factor that will really make us win tonight and that's our fans. Now, Coach Tajic has been very vocal about Trying to pack up the Rizal Stadium and you've been watching all the games so far. How important are the fans to help motivate our players to win tonight? Huge, huge factor. I think tonight I just passed by Rizal and it was really <laughs> getting a pack. Now people are lining Ooh. up and this is what you want to see for women's football or at least for football at Rizal. You know, the, the girls have been playing really well and they really deserve the full crowd, the support. And like what Serena Bolden said in her last interview, they really feed off the energy of the mm -hmm. crowd. So hopefully tonight, in the semifinals on Friday, and hopefully we make it to the finals, we'll be able to pack Rizal Memorial for the Filipinas. Mm -hmm. Was definitely gonna be on my way tonight to Rizal, but mm -hmm. well, thank you for being here tonight, Maria. It feels like we're still here in Rizal, and I know we'll be there in a while. <laughs> yes, rush, I'll be rushing there, so thank you again, and um, we really hope that everyone keeps supporting and cheering yes. for the Filipinas. All right, thank you. That's Mariel Benitez, Javeliana. And after the break, we'll get to know some inside stories about your favorite PVL players this conference. Stay tuned, you're watching The Game.
The PBL Invitational Conference has finally begun and there's no shortage of exciting moments on the court. But there are so many stories from behind the scenes that volleyball fans can't wait to hear. Now joining us tonight is our PBL insider and courtside reporter, Sam Corrales. Hi Sam, thank you for coming. Welcome to the game. Hi ladies, thanks so much for having me. I am loving the energy of this show. Girl power. Let's I know, girl yes. power. No? <laughs> Sam, alam naman natin. Even I myself as a volleyball fan, I'm very excited to hear about the stories on the court and also off the court. So simulan natin, pabigatan naman. Uh, the phenom, phenom of volleyball, Eliza Valdez. What do you have to say about her? Of course. Well, now she's actually having a game uh, for Ooh, today yes. in uh, PBL, and it's gonna be like a battle of the finals last conference. So okay. super exciting to see what the phenom is up to. But what I could share with you guys and all the fans Ooh. here is that the phenom is also up to you know stepping up her game beyond mm -hmm. the court. So Ooh. I got to speak to her like during uh, one of the BTS shoots, mm -hmm. and I noticed na para mahilig ata siya mag makeup and to you know <laughs> fix herself up. And she told me that this is you know a new skill that she learned like you know during the break of course we saw her on TV like on a show right so I mean it's nice to see you know athletes mm -hmm. also you know working on hobbies mm -hmm. and things that you know spark joy beyond the court so that's Eliza Valdez for you I also I'm not sure if you guys saw but um, her birthday um, that yeah that, that's the video yeah. on Instagram I saw that <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 actually speaking <laughs> of Z dahil teammate mo siya since college days in Ateneo what can you say about her? Talaga bang hindi siya masyadong nagme-makeup nung college days at ngayon sobrang marunong na siya. <laughs> Ang masasabi ko lang is parang ready na siya for mature roles. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's it's one of she's one of the girls in the team before na hindi mo makikita ng kaartehan mm -hmm. ng I mean, ng ka-extra hand. Mm -hmm. So, seeing her bloom to the woman that she is today is definitely such a joy to see. Exactly. You know, it's great to see how she has evolved through the years yes. from Ateneo now to Cream Night and her also trying out other things outside of volleyball. Now, let's go on to our next player, Chang Abi Maranio. <laughs> uh, what can you say about what she does also off the court? Okay, so what's interesting is during my first stint as a courtside was actually mm -hmm. with um, Atazi also with um, <laughs> F2, the right? So, I noticed Chang Abi in the bathroom with mm -hmm. a hair curler, just really, you know, <laughs> taking some time to fix herself up before the game. And we know how she is on the court, very spunky, that's something <laughs> amas, that swag, right? That's something we see. And that was my first impression of her. But, you know, when I got to talk to her, she's very warm, she's <laughs> very, like, confident in herself. And again, it's nice to see, um, you know, girls like really taking care of themselves in whatever way and really expressing um, through what we wear mm -hmm. or like how we fix ourselves up like at the Z today. <laughs> I love it. Beautiful Very outfit. sophisticated tonight. <laughs> I was telling her, parang green looks good on you. That's right. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> but you know, <laughs> sobrang ganda nga no, na si Chang Abi, despite her very fierce aura on the court, off the yes. court, she also has that subtle um, aura to herself. But yes. what can you say Daisy, as her teammate also, about those off-the-court, I guess, rituals that you may say, what do you have as an off-court ritual as well? Siguro, going back to yung Kichang Abi, uh -huh. talagang, di ba, syempre yung branding niya, BMDC, Beast Mode ano Don't yun? Care. Ah, wow, first oh, time yeah, yeah. ko yung oh, <laughs> FYI na lang sa mga new fans alike also. So, makikita mo yan, pag sa court, talagang trabaho, it's all business. <laughs> Even at practice, like, siya yung talagang katangi-tanging nagre-remind din na parate na, oh, training tayo, pukpuk tayo, trabaho, trabaho. But then, outside the court, makikita mo naman yung kakikaya niya, yung mga, well, you, which you also see during the, the games with her hair clips and mm -hmm. all. But, um, it's good to have those moments also na parang yun, yun nabanggit nga ni Sam na um, nagka-curl ng hair. Uh -oh. Siguro First like, time ko yun marinig ah. I Akala know. ko parang Ako tali lang ng buhok. Sabi ko rin, Sam, sure ka ba siya yun? Kasi parang hindi ko naman nakita yun. I saw the clips, girl. I was like, that's Sam Abby for you. <laughs> so I guess it's a good ano, grounding practice. Mm -hmm. Siguro for people like Chang, it's curling her hair. For me, it's listening to music. Mm -hmm. For Bea... Uh, for, for me, <laughs> ano, yeah, listening to music as also. well, having that small, quiet time for yourself. I guess it's really different per player, but I guess okay. whatever works for you works, right? Um, but then moving on, let's talk about <laughs> the games that we had today. First Ooh, off, PLDT yeah. versus Charitigo, and PLDT won that matchup um, in straight sets. And 
Alam naman natin, Sam, you're very hardworking. You were there in that game today. Lagaria, you went straight here right after. What can you say about PLDT's first win of the conference? Well, it was so nice that they were able to set this momentum for mm -hmm. themselves. Um, I got to speak to Mika Reyes after the game and she said, you know, we're just getting started. And we all noticed um, with the way that they played today, iba yung galawan nila. Eh. There's mm -hmm. so much grit, there's so much confidence, and you could really feel that they're trying to get more wins so that they could improve for, from their like fifth place finish last conference so I'm not sure if you guys heard but Neil Flores one of our mm -hmm. PBL um, yes. analysts also she he shared that PLDT would train for five hours in a oh, day wow. and I got oh. to confirm this with um, the Mac Rhea Dimakalang and their setter and sabi niya, yeah they really have to work on you know their defense mm -hmm. their service and I think that hard work really paid off today yung five hours na yun well you know I'm sure they're really trying to bounce back hard as you mentioned coming from that fifth place finish last conference what can you say about the PLDT squad right now bannered of course by Mikarius DMAC and also Kat Arado Yes, actually, yesterday I saw them before they started practice. <laughs> Sana pala tinayman ko kung five hours talaga. <laughs> but no, yeah, uh, si PLDT, they were one of the teams that was to watch out for in mm -hmm. the previous conference. Kasi nag-rebuild yan eh. Mm -hmm. So I remember parang ha, when you check the list of the players, parang they have so much potential because you have the big names. Like you mentioned, mm -hmm. Mika Reyes, Rhea de Mokalangan, Kat Arado, national team levels yan. And I guess what the challenge was for them in the previous conference was um, to be um, to move as one unit. Because parang ano yan eh, kinuha mo from ano, different teams before and then now they're in one. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a good start, 3-0 uh, today. Parang they're moving as one unit na and working with the system that Coach George has. And I guess to add to that, um, mm -hmm. you mentioned, you know, chemistry. I think they've yes. been together for a few months already. And Correct. you could really feel their support, even from the bench players. Mm -hmm. I was by the bench. And grabe, when Del Palomata would really block the ball, monster block. Even si Coach George, <laughs> when he the ball, pumunta sa labas, he's gonna try to get it. And it just shows, you know, the fun of the game, mm -hmm. going back to, you know, like that love for sports, and it's really evident. So, hopefully, PLDT along with the other teams on um, this conference will really find that gel, that <laughs> chemistry, and you know, just have fun. And that's the essence of the heart of volleyball, exactly. Right? Yes. Well, definitely, PLDT is on a winning note as we start the, the PVL conference. But we want to learn more about the stories on and off the court from you, Sam. But of course, we'll hear more from you later on because after the break. We'll find out more about Kayla Sanchez's decision to represent the country. Ooh. Stay tuned, you're watching The Game. The game. 
Tokyo 2020 Olympic medalist Kayla Sanchez has declared that she will start representing the Philippines in international tournaments. Marty Bautista tells us more on our newest national athlete. Let's watch this. Nagpakitang gilas ang star swimmer na si Kayla Sanchez sa New Clark City Aquatic Center. Sa pagkakataong ito, hindi na lalaban para sa Canada kundi sa Team Pilipinas ang 2020 Tokyo Olympic silver at bronze medalist. I'm just happy to be here. Um, I'm always open to new adventures and I think this is just uh, the perfect time in my life where I can be here and just really enjoy it. Kahit ipinanganak sa Singapore at lumaki sa Canada, proud Pinay raw si Sanchez. Isa siya sa mga itinuturing na best Canadian swimmers na nakapag-uwi ng silver medal sa 4x100-meter relay sa si 2020 Tokyo Olympics. Nagpasalamat si Kyla sa Swim Canada sa paghasa ng kanyang talento. Pero naniniwala raw siyang panahon na para bitbitin ang watawat ng Pilipinas. It's always been on my mind because of my heritage. I know um, that the Philippines was always an option for me. At the same time, my life was in Canada and I had still a lot of training and a lot of learning to do. Suportado naman si Kyla ng kanyang pamilya. I emotional ako. Hindi ko lang pinakita sa kanya. Nabihan ko agad si Mrs. I think ito na yung time na inihintay natin. I'm confident na malaki, malaki, malaki maitutulong niya sa swimming community dito. Ayon sa Philippine Swimming Incorporated, 2017 pa nang simula nilang ligawan si Kyla. Kinakausap ang family, pero in the end, Kyla made that decision herself. Nag-email yung Swim Canada because uh, they were asking us kung kailan nga namin lalabas yung press release. I got a letter from them and they said to take care of Kyla. She is a gem. Pagkatapos ng 12-month residency, opisyal ng makakapaglaro si Kyla para sa bansa at ang kanyang pinakamalaking target, ang Paris 2024 Olympics. There's definitely daily goals and there's long-term goals. Uh, the long-term goal being Paris. Um, Short-term goals would just be to get stronger, get faster in the pool. 1932 pa huling nag-uwi ng Olympic medal ang Pilipinas sa swimming. Kaya naman sisikapin daw ni Kyla na makasungkit din ng medalya para sa bansa. I'm just so proud uh, to represent the Philippines uh, and to be given this opportunity. Thank you for making my uh, arrival here so warm and I've felt everything. Uh, I've felt only love, so I'm very grateful and appreciative of that. And still with us to talk about Kayla Sanchez and Filipino women in sports is PBL insider and former UP Pep Squad member Sam Corrales. Grabe, I know. what a news! Exactly. Grabe, like for someone that young also and the prodigy to transfer from Canada to the Philippines under the Swimming Federation. I know, this is great news for Philippine sports, for women in sports, and you know, this is really an inspiration also for the current national athletes that we have in the swimming team because we can actually finally grab an Olympic medal in the field of sports. Talaga nakatawa talaga yung news na to, no? Especially because she already won two Olympic medals right. in Correct. the Tokyo Olympics in 2020, and now. She'll be representing the Philippines in her next international tournament. I think that uh, we failed to mention that earlier. Two mm -hmm. medals, two hardware, exactly. silver in the 4x100 freestyle and bronze in the 4x100 medley relay. Naman. Grabe kakaiba. Sam, how do you think this will play out in the future for the Philippine swimming team? Well, I think it's also the sharing of her experience mm -hmm. as an athlete in that level, you know, winning several Olympic medals already, what knowledge she can impart to the next generation of athletes. And I'm sure you guys know that being athletes yourself, like being in a team, but always having that mindset of how can I give back to my teammates based on what I experience. And on the other hand, it's also her, um, I guess, embracing the Filipino culture. She mentioned that, you know, super warm, you welcome. She felt the love and that's really, again, the essence of, of sports. That's what, make it, that's what makes it so much fun. BM. And you know, speaking of, because we are girl power again tonight, and we are all athletes, or maybe former athletes as well, you know, I think it's time for us to take recognition about the right. achievement 
of our women in sports in our country. So, grabe nga naman grabe. talaga. Starting off last year, of course, with Heidelin Diaz grabbing the first gold in the first Olympics gold. for the Philippines. That's right. And baka nakalimutan na kasi natin, unang gintong medalya, oh, oh, man, Olympic man. medal <laughs> para sa Pilipinas, babae. True. Ang, uh, her legacy lives on. I mean, weightlifting as a sport, mm -hmm. especially you know, breaking barriers in that in that field, just gives so much hope and you know, inspiration to those who would you know want to start weightlifting as well. Like, why not? The bat prove them wrong and everything. And I also want to mention, since we're talking about the national team, mm -hmm. Olympics, speaking of Argila's team, they're exactly. also here. Yes. Yes. Hindi natin makakalimutan, or hindi ko makakalimutan, yes, of bilang isang basketballista, <laughs> of course, our SEA Games, back-to-back -back gold medalist for the 5x5 tournament, our women's basketball team. You know, it's great to see how big and how how big the improvement has been, not just through the support, but also through the program, through Correct. the skill level of our athletes. From the time that I was playing up until now, kitang kita naman natin the great improvement of our Even girls. Even the under 16, exactly, not to mention, they were here third uh, place. Correct, they were here. Uh, they just played the FIBA Asia Championship, mm -hmm. and you're right, they got third place. Talagang the future is bright mm -hmm. for Filipino female athletes. And of course, dahil nga we had the first body with Mariel yes. Havilana. Let's wag natin din kalimutan ating Filipinas, our women's national football team, which is yes. current. They're currently playing right now against Thailand. All the best to them. I mean, we've gone full circle, mm -hmm. all different types of sports, not just here in the Philippines, mm -hmm. but also overseas. As example in Singapore, right? So I guess it just gives hope to those watching exactly. as well. If you're an aspiring national team athlete, if you want to make way Waves in your sport, why not? And bakit pa tayo lalayo? We have Z here, we have Bea, who are athletes. We have you! You as well! Yeah, and who are also going beyond the sport, you know, sharing mm -hmm. your passion for sports as now an analyst, as a That's true. host. Right? And actually, you know, it's my first time to really see how big the support and big the limelight has been given to women in sports. So it's great to see, you know, how much the how much women in sports has grown through the years. And that's right, and we're all only halfway through. Okay. 2022 and I'm sure Ooh. madami pa tayo makikitang this is just the beginning <laughs> para sa Filipino sports um, and that's it for tonight thank you for joining us thank I'm you, Zihar Basho and thank you for joining us catch us weeknights here on One News One Sports and One Sports Plus on behalf of Sam Corrales I'm Bea Daes Fabras and this has been The Game